Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Monday. Yay, it's Monday. It's Monday again, our favorite day of the week, which means it is time for the Monday Morning Show. I'm Noah. And I'm Ashley. And we are your hosts once again, giving you the Freedom Village news. So, Ashley, what did you do this weekend? What did I do? I went to the beach. Oh, nice. Yes, it was beautiful. It was beautiful. Wonderful. And so just had a relaxing time at the beach. Ah, did you bring your baby? I did, yeah. Oh. Let her splash her toes in the water. Oh, did she love it? She loved it. Oh, I love Buried that. her in the sand. Ah, did she wear her little pink sun hat? Of course. Do you have any pictures of your baby I at do. the beach? I do. Oh, let's check them out. All right. <laughs> Cute. She is so cute. I can't believe how big she's gotten. So big. She's oh. almost a year old. My goodness. Time flies. It does. <laughs> how was your weekend? My weekend was really good. I went to Sutton's Bay with my mom and our good friend. Fun. We saw a musical at Interlochen and just nice. there was an art festival and just spent a little girls weekend. That's so. wonderful. Yeah, it was a great time. Well, good. That sounds pretty relaxing, kind of relieve some stress. Yes, definitely. I'm feeling very relaxed. Today. Well, that is perfect because, because this week is National Simplify Your Life Week. Ah, simplify your life. How do you simplify well, your life? Well, it's all about relieving stress, okay. right? So there's lots of ways you can relieve stress. You like can do what you did. You can do something you love. Getting a massage. Getting a massage. Watch a movie. Go to a musical. Spend time with your mom. Ah. All that good stuff. Okay, okay. Just relaxing. You can clean up. Oh, that's relaxing when you have a clean space. Yeah, I think I'm going to declutter some closets this weekend, or nice. this week. Yes, good. Mm -hmm. Kind of clear my brain, clear my space. You can disconnect from social media. Mm, that is a good one. It I is. definitely find myself too connected to social media. Yeah, so sit down, read a book instead of surfing Facebook or TikTok or whatever. A real book instead of the Facebook? Yes, I a real book, not the plan. Facebook. <laughs> And relieving stress can actually save your health. Really? It can, yeah. Too much stress can um, end up giving you different diseases and... Really? So it, it pays off to, it does. to be it does. simplifying your life. Simplify your life this week. All Find right. some ways to uh, take some time for you. Great. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we've got some things that would help people de-stress this Maybe week. Maybe we do. What do we have going on? This well... Today. Today, we've got something that really could help, maybe. It could. At 2.15, we're taking a bus over to the Holland Area Arts Council for a watercolor lesson. Ooh, yes. that is a relaxing it thing is. to just watch the water. Oh, that's a fun. Painting, and it's yes. all free. It's a free senior studio days at the Arts Council. So sign up in Touchtown or show up downstairs. Get on the bus at 2.15. Nice. Yes. And tomorrow, we have another, it should be a relaxing event. At 11 a.m., we have Peter Bergen, who is a ragtime pianist. He will be here in the atrium to play us some tunes. So you can sit in the atrium, enjoy some piano music. He is a great performer. He's lots of fun. And he just makes ragtime really interesting. Nice. So that'll be in the atrium, yeah. And if you're not interested in that, you mm -hmm. can hop on the bus at 11 with the Village Artists. And we're heading out into the community to do some artistic creations. Ah. And... <laughs> At 1.30 on Tuesday afternoon, we will be hat decorating. I'm excited for this. And you might wonder why we are decorating hats. So next week is anniversary week, which is one of arguably the biggest celebrations we have at Freedom mm -hmm. Village, where we celebrate the start of Freedom Village. So this year, our big party is going to be Kentucky Derby themed. And what is a derby party without a big fluffy, hat. obnoxious, wonderful hat. <laughs> so we will be decorating some hats on Tuesday at 1.30 in the Arts and Crafts Room. If you have your own hat and you just want to add some fun supplies to it, it is $5. If you want to have supplies and a hat, it's $10. And we encourage you to come to the Arts and Crafts Room at 1.30 on Tuesday. That'll be a good time decorating. to get ready for the party. I bought lots of big, fun flowers and sparkly things. Nice. It'll be great. It's going to be wonderful. Yes. 
And then we can end our day on Tuesday with another relaxing musical event. We've got the Legion Band Concert. Bus is heading out at 645. Awesome. Yes. Wednesday, another thing that will add to our health. We're really on it's top like of this It's like we planned theme. this. It's sort of like we did. Uh, at 9.30, we will be heading out to the Mud Lake Farm for a tour. And they are, they do hydroponics, permaculture, and regenerative agriculture systems without pesticides or her herbicides. And they grow food and beverages naturally. Nice. So they do kombucha. They do um, not tinctures, but different. Cordials? Is that what cordials, they call them? Cordials, yes. Cordials and sodas and lots of natural things. So we'll have a tasting nice. as well as a tour of their farm. And uh, it's $15 and you can sign up on Touchdown to go with us. Very so nice. Where is this farm? It's in Hudsonville. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's cool. So they uh, are local. They are at the farmer's market every week. And then their farm is just out in Hudsonville. So we're going to head out there. Very good. Yes. Support local. Exactly. Thursday night, we've got more wonderful music for you. The Dynamic Duo is coming to perform. Noah, can you tell us what the Dynamic Duo is? The Dynamic Duo is made up of Annie Lowry and Mike Lutley. And they, uh, Annie plays the piano and sings a little bit, and Mike plays the saxophone and a couple other instruments. And they will be here to entertain us with some fun music. Love it. Yeah. Very good. Saturday night, we are heading out to one more concert for the oh week. Oh my goodness, <laughs> this feels a little bit like It's a, a lot. lot of music this week, but we love music. The we Holland do. Symphony Orchestra is doing their annual community concert. It is called um, Our Wonderful World, and it's five local diverse groups performing at this free concert. Yeah. So sign up in Touchtown. Bus leaves at 7 on Saturday. Wonderful. That yeah. is a busy week of it music busy and week. fun and relaxation. Before so. we gear up for next week, which is anniversary Ooh. week, which is going to be fun but busy. It's going to be a very busy week. Should we tell them what we're going to do? We should probably tell them what we're going to do. We're going to have the Monday morning show of Monday of anniversary week, of course. But we are going to come at you live. 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 For real live. For real live. Like live and in person. We'll Usually be we film a little bit ahead of time so we can cut out our mess ups, our bloopers. Our silliness. Too much silliness. We can't have too much. But we're going <laughs> to come to you live next week. So mm -hmm. you'll want to tune in at 9 a.m. on Monday. Be a challenge. It's going to be something fun. It's our first ever live episode. I'm a little scared. So I'm a, I'm a little nervous, but I think we're we'll, going to do it. We've got it. Yeah. So yeah. So make sure you tune in next week, Monday, for the Monday morning show live. Ah! <laughs> Speaking of anniversary week, our interview this week kind of goes right hand in hand with anniversary yes, week. Yes, it does. We um, have a wonderful interview with Judy Hazelton, who is on the scholarship committee and as we know or maybe you don't know uh, during anniversary week on Tuesday there is a scholarship matinee where we award all of the students recipients their scholarships yes. and so Judy is going to talk to you here about a little bit how that process worked throughout the year awesome. so let's take a look. good morning all of you residents who are up and early this morning and watching us we're going to talk this morning with Judy Hazelton Probably a lot of you know her already. Good morning, Judy. Good morning. Glad, Glad you're Joe. here. Yes. <laughs> We've met before, but not on this, not at this occasion. And this is something different for you and for me. Yes, it is. And so we're going to talk a little bit about Judy's role with the scholarship committee. A lot of you have information about it. You all know, and you've always all committed to it. You've count contributed to it. So let's get to, to some of the details of it and how, let's see, one of my first questions was, it's composed of residents. How are they selected? All right, the scholarship committee is composed of nine residents and they are selected by becoming nominees for vacancies on the scholarship committee. The scholarship committee doesn't have a term limit. So vacancies occur when members decide they've been on long enough, maybe three or four years, and feel it's time to give the opportunity to some other resident. And, and, when, and if there's a vacancy, how is that noticed? Uh, who, who says who? I believe that Gwen would announce that sort of, it's, it's kind of word of mouth, because yeah. once the committee members realize that there will be some vacancies, and I'm speaking a bit here from personal experience, Yes. Uh, I start talking to people who I think would be good to be on the committee, and if they're willing to serve, then I put their name down, and 
other community members do the same thing. And then this list of names is given to Gwen, who puts them in a list, uh, gives them to the existing committee members, and they vote then. Uh, if there are three openings, uh, we probably are asked to vote for five, and then Gwen would take the top five from that list. We may have a list of 20. And then we vote again and determine then which three or four, however many vacancies there are, uh, get on the committee. Um, what, what, do, what do you do in a committee meeting like that? What are you looking at? You mean for new members? Yeah, no, not for new uh. members. Let's say you've got your, your, your uh, group now, and now you're getting applicants. Where are they coming from, and how do you do that? All right. Um, first of all, may I talk about the funding? Oh, surely. Before we do that. Uh, the funding comes from two basic sources. One is called the Community Foundation of the Holland Zealand area. That's got the C, F, Z, Z, Z. <laughs> yes, and uh, their funding comes from interest from uh, a trust fund. And they distribute this money not just to Freedom Village but to many agencies in the Holland mm -hmm. Zealand area, primarily for scholarships. Our second source of income is from what we call the Pancake Fund, which includes money raised from the Pancake Breakfast uh, but also from the bazaar, which is usually a sizable chunk, and uh, then from a lot of other little sales, Lenny Cross's blueberry pie sale and her peach sale and all that money mm -hmm. goes into what we just label the pancake fund. Then actually there's a third amount of money which is left over from the previous year oh. because the committee never spends all of the money that's available uh, for two reasons. Uh, a lot of this money is generated from stock, uh, from interest in stocks, right. um, things like that. And some years we may have as few as 14 applicants. We've had as many as 40. And so depending on how much money is coming in the next year, plus how many people we're going to have to distribute it to, we always save a bunch. Uh, I can be specific. This year, we had a total of $75,000 from the three sources, uh, the foundation, the pancakes, and leftovers. We decided to spend only 57000 of that, leaving in the cookie jar for next year 18000 And we came up with 57000 because this year we had 19 applicants, and we decided uh, costs keep going up that we could afford to give an average amount of $3,000 to each of the 19 applicants. It's a goodly and amount. And that's sort of the financial nuts and bolts that's of this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then I guess the next is who applies for this money? All right. The applications come from Freedom Village employees. Uh, Many of them work in the kitchen as servers, but we also get a few from the inn. And so uh, that, uh, some of them are first time, some of them are second and third. We even have fourth time applicants. Really? So you mean that goes for, uh, by the year then? Yes, yes. Oh. So, um, in fact, we had two this year who have just graduated with their bachelor's degrees. I don't know if they've applied and received all four years, but they were certainly repeat applicants. But <clears throat> the process of applying starts quite early in the year. Uh, Gwen, who's just amazing at organizing this, Gwen in the office, uh, sends out a notice in the employee newsletter that it's now time for those who want scholarships mm -hmm. to submit mm -hmm applications or actually go and get their application with a lot of instructions from Gwen. And then there's always the due date. This year I think the due date was uh, April 21, something like that. And so now these applicants have this application form in their hand and they start filling it out. Now the application form consists of a lot of personal information. Uh, name addressed, uh, where they graduated from high school, their high school GPA, 
their SAT, and if they're in college, then it's just their college GPA. Um, things like how many are in your household. Uh, let's say there's a two-parent family with three kids, so there's five in the household. And how many of that household are in college? Now, this may be the first one to go to college, but there may be an older sibling already in Does college. income play a part in this too? Family, in, Does family income play a part it in does, this too? It does, but we don't know that. Uh, okay. in, in a sense, we find out if it's available or not, because uh, one of the questions on the application is, how do you plan to finance your uh, education? Okay. And some of them will say, uh, my own savings, uh, family, mm -hmm. uh, scholarships, things like that. Um, let me give a, a little side example here, um, and this is, this is all hypothetical, but let's say you have an applicant who graduated a high school graduate from a private college like Calvin Christian or Holland Christian, uh, comes from a two-parent family, uh, both parents college educated, maybe both parents working, maybe one of three children. Uh, and this kid graduates with a four or maybe a 4.1 scholastic average, we say, ooh, this is a good, good way to invest our money. And then you have another applicant who comes from uh, a single parent family, a mother, um, one of two, three, maybe four children, and they're the first in the family ever to go to college, mm -hmm. maybe even the first to graduate from high school. Obviously, there's not the financial backing from the family there. And maybe this person doesn't have a four-point average in high school, maybe it's only 3.5. But this person has a dream and a goal. And so as a committee member, you have to decide, is one more deserving than the other? Well, are they at least equal? And every member on the committee has to struggle with things like that. Uh, and you do this then by interviewing the yes, person. Yes, we do. And that's, right. that's a quite intensive interview for you to get all this information from this Well, a lot applicant. of it comes from, we're all given copies of their application. Uh, when, we first, when we first meet with Gwen, she comes from, you know, with a stack this <laughs> high of paper. <laughs> and this year we all got complete copies of the 19 applications. And these application forms, uh, I'm sort of getting back now to what they have to submit. In addition to all this factual information, they have to submit three letters of recommendation and then they have to write an essay about themselves. And usually in the essay, That's very important. Uh, they talk about why they picked a particular career and they may or may not stick with it. But it's interesting that by and large, most of these kids want to help people, regardless of their background. With yeah. your background in teaching, especially in English, you really look at that essay a lot, don't you? Yes, we do. Uh, you, you individually, I'm thinking. Yes, I do. Although I don't, doing. I don't go through it with a red pen. Mm. But no, <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but I, I certainly do go through it for organization of thought and things end, like yes, that. Yes, I'm sure you do. But it's, and that makes that qualifies you right. for being on the committee. I yeah. think. So, that it's good. Uh, then, then we finally start the interviews. And again, Gwen, amazing because now you have to coordinate the availability schedules of nine committee members. Oh, sure. <laughs> and then the availability schedules of, in this year, 19 applicants, which, you know, she does. Uh, we usually don't do more than three interviews at a time, and not, not three people sitting here at a time, but each one is a 15-minute interview, and then there's a five-minute break in between where we can do just a little bit of kibitzing uh, but here again, it's pretty much every committee member does his own evaluation. There's a time later on when we, you know, sort of add up and subtract okay, and so you, uh, you, average out. Yeah, we're not communicating after no, we not present at the time. what you like, and, no. and, and then after that you right. put it together. And so then after about this this year, we got through it pretty quickly. About in about four weeks, I think. Sometimes the 
interviews lasted to June because uh, people on the committee take vacations, the kids well, take scheduling vacations. is, yeah, uh, it's a problem. Scheduling is, is amazing. Sure. So after all the interviews have been completed, then the committee members receive a spreadsheet. And there are five columns in the spreadsheet. The first one is filled in. It's filled in by the supervisor of the candidate. Uh, in many cases, it's Terry. It could be Carrie in the in the ser food service area, okay. or whoever the supervisor is at the end. And they rank each candidate uh, five being high. And so you have some that are a perfect five, and then some maybe 4.7, 4.3. So we have that number. Then the committee members have four other columns to fill in using the same five as high. And the first one is the interview. How did that go? Mm -hmm. The second one is the letters of recommendation. How did we feel the candidate came out in those? The third one is the candidate's essay. And the fourth one, and this is this subjective thing, is what we determine as need. And well, that, so that's a pretty comprehensive it. It is. All the so way. now you have five columns, each with a number based on five as a high. And then uh, each individual averages his five columns and comes up with, say, maybe a 4.7, something like that. Or it could still be a five. You know, some of them are five straight across. And then based on that, we look at this average scholarship amount of three thousand dollars and say now does this applicant deserve a little more maybe thirty one hundred and does this applicant maybe not need or maybe shouldn't have maybe quite the amount like 29 something like that uh, it all has to average out to three thousand apiece and so there's a bit of math involved here <laughs> too and then we meet the committee meets, and each committee member announces what he or she thinks should be the dollar amount scholarship for that name. And Gwen puts them into the computer and does an average of the nine recommendations and comes up with one grand average amount. And that's the math part. Well, but it's it's work. So for it's a lot of work. And it, it seems complicated, but I think it's very thorough. Yes, it is. And I think it's very honest and very complete. Right. And you know, the wonderful thing about the committee is that never, on my three years, have I had people say, "Oh, why are you giving them that much?" or "Why are you not giving them more?" Everybody's opinion is respected, and everybody's opinion has a reason. And that's why we have nine instead of just one or two or three. There are yes. nine people that are on the committee? Nine people on the committee. Okay. Yes. And that doesn't change. There will always be nine. There will they, always they, be nine, know. yes. And uh, that's, a, that's a good, odd number. It's a nice that's, number. That's it's great. Kind of like the Supreme Court. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, uh, I wasn't you, going to go there. <laughs> well, let's, <laughs> no, let's not. Let's, <laughs> Let's say, now you've been on how many years, too? This is my third year. And do you plan to continue? Do you enjoy no, it? No, I've told Gwen that I think it's time to give my spot to somebody else. And so uh, this can, has been my last year. It's been a wonderful experience. Uh, I mean, it, working with the committee. I, I bet it is. It's really wonderful. Now, you've got applicants of all ages, don't you? Yes, some we very do. very young, and then some that are continuing education. That's right. So yes. you have some that are very... Well, in advanced, uh, you know, beyond 18 and 19 oh, yes. that are uh -huh. still applying Sure, we have the two that are going on to grad school. Yes, and I think uh, that and some wonderful. of them, for various reasons, have had to spread their education out over several years. They take some time off to earn some money, and then they go back and do another couple of semesters. And yeah, I mean, these, these kids are, you know, amazing. And when you do they the are, interviews, they are, they are. some of them are, they're, they're so... They, they seem relaxed, although I talked to one boy afterwards because I had heard ahead of time that he was going to be very nervous. 
And I said, you were great. I said, you didn't seem nervous at all. He says, you should have seen my knees shaking <laughs> under the table. <laughs> You know, you you meet them that way, but we who are served in the dining room, mm -hmm. we meet them th in another aspect of it, yes, and uh, we realize that what a caliber of students these are. Yes. And they're just so delightful, even, to, where are you going to school? Where are you going to go? Mm -hmm. They're so free about telling yes, it. Yes, yeah. Just to and that's that's the way they are in the interviews, too. They're, they're just so... They're poised in the interviews, and, and they're friendly, and they communicate. So and really, that's the really gratifying work it that is. you're doing there. It is. So you'd recommend it for anyone who has the inclination to do it yes. and the time? Yes, and the time. It's a commitment. It, it is a commitment. The first year is confusing. You, you say, how am I going yeah, yeah. to remember doing? this? The what second year, doing? you're quite comfortable with it. The yeah. third year, you're that's almost great. a pro. Well, then you're committed to it, and you know, yes, and yes. you can see. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, anything else you'd like to tell us about this, or uh, you want to encourage somebody to apply for it, or well, pass if, the word around? If you're what interested you like in helping people's dreams come true, to me that was the most rewarding thing. Uh, all these these students, particularly the ones whose whose backgrounds were not particularly academic, yeah, and here yeah. they are launching out on this this amazing adventure. It's, yeah. and, uh, and you having been in education, you can see how important it is. It is. Yeah. Thank you so much. Anything else you'd like to add, or shall we just say thanks? And it's well, been thank fun you for having me. With you. It's, oh, it's been a wonderful it's been experience. A delight. And you explained a lot for us of who really didn't know. We of us who didn't know exactly okay. how it all works. Yeah. And I hope you find someone who can replace you with the same qualifications you have. Oh, well, I hope so too. I have, so, I have some people in mind that I'm going to approach. Good. <laughs> Thank you, Judy. You've been watching an interview okay. with Judy Hazelton. Thank you. And she's been talking about our scholarship fund. So go eat some more pancakes on Saturday morning, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I learned some things about the scholarship that I didn't know. I mean, I know enough but she really had a yeah, lot of knowledge to it was that wonderful was yeah and what else do we have this i think week? that's what we've got for this that's week. all we are let's so go excited relax to come at you next week live make sure you tune in but until then simplify your life do some relaxing that's ashley that's noah and this was monday morning bye, bye.